Hey guys, wanted to go ahead and just do a really quick overview of the Shure MV X2U. And what I'm gonna do is show you my settings that I have on the screen, but also show you obviously I'm using the microphone here. So right now, uh, this is plugged into the Rode NTG5, and this is how the audio sounds. And this video I've probably done about five or six times already, so it, if I seem kind of out of sync, it's because I'm like, I'm done with this already, but I'm gonna try to keep this video short and to the point. So yeah, this device is awesome. What's really cool about this, is that this is about 3.4 ounces, but you don't need to bring an XLR cable with you. Basically, this plugs into your computer, very compact. It attaches right to your microphone, and it could be a really great travel setup that it's about $129. And this thing can go up, go up to 60 decibels of gain. So I do want to mention a few things. Oh, basically my settings here, um, just for context here, um, my mic gain is set at 15 and a half decibels of gain. Um, the monitor mix is set to the microphone, the high pass filters off, the limiters off, the compressors off, no equalization. Okay. So I'm going to talk about two things or three things I don't like about this, this setup here. Um, and to go from there. So the first thing is a minor quibble, but it is, there's no physical gain knobs on here, so I can't adjust anything. So the way you adjust things is you actually have to go in here and use their application to move it left and right. As a voice actor, that's bad. But as a streamer, that's fine. Because as a voice actor, if you're working in voice acting where you need to adjust your volume back and forth, back and forth, um, especially, you know, that's that's not good. <laughs> but if for a streamer, if you're going to just be speaking like this the whole way through, no problem. It's no not an issue. But I think for a voice actor, that makes this a more difficult sort of setup. Or the second issue that I see here is... Um, because there's no physical knobs, it forces you to use their applications. And so, I mean, it's, it's annoying, but basically you need to put in your email to install the drivers. So, like I said, everything's all digital. Everything's all digital. The third thing you need to know, which kind of goes in tandem with that, is that I noticed that my playback volume would add automatically change by itself, and it would go all the way down. So I would be listening on my headphones, and I'm like, dude, I can't hear anything. I can't hear anything. I was using different headphones for like a little bit, and I was like, what the hell? I can't hear anything. And uh, now I realize it, what it does is it automatically changed my playback volume to like really low. So I had to go back in Audacity and bring that volume back to 100%, and now I could actually hear myself again. Um, but, uh, yeah, now I'm going to talk about one other issue. This is related to the Shure SM7B. This is not a deal breaker, but it's something you should know. So I'm going to switch off to the SM7B now. All right. So now I've switched off to the Shure SM7B. My settings are basically the mic gain is now set at 56 and a half. So I'm basically going all the way up now. Monitor mix is obviously set to the, the microphone, no equalization, no high pass filter, no limiter, no compressor, no EQ. So this is all raw audio. So I'm going to talk about one uh, minor quibble that I have with this uh, when you set it to the SM7B. Um, but it's not a major issue. So the thing is, when you crank up the, the gain, you need to crank it up all the way pretty much, right? But so as you can see in Audacity and also, also when I show you on the screen, like I've got a pretty healthy amount of gain here. So it definitely can drive the SM7B. However, it is pretty noisy in the headphones that you use. But just like how it always is, what you're hearing and how noisy it is, it goes tss. What you're hearing is actually not how it actually uh, outputs, so to say. So it'll sound really loud and noisy, so to say, but actually in the actual recording, it's not that bad. You know what I'm trying to say? So just note that when you hear it on this, it's, and especially depending on the headphones you have, it's gonna be like tss. and you're gonna be, oh my God, it's super noisy. It's not the microphone per se, it's your headphones, the headphone jack that they have here. Like, it's just noisy. So, too long didn't read is, it'll sound noisy, but it's actually not that noisy. So when you actually see the video and you hear it and you watch it, you realize it's not that bad. And this is all raw audio, but when, but you can't hear it. You can't hear what I hear. It's like, tss, like super loud. So, yeah, I mean, that's my two cents. Um, another thing too, this isn't, this doesn't work on an iPhone. It doesn't work on an iPad. It's pretty much strictly computer. So it kind of, you know, it, it's just, uh, that limits the options makes my job easier. Cause that's less things for me to troubleshoot. But, um, yeah, I mean, this is just my first day. I think this could be, um, a viable option if you are looking for something that's very tra like travel friendly and portable, but I don't like the fact that I can't change 
gain. You know, like I, I don't, I don't know, but I also feel like it, it like it, it's a whole other story when I have other interfaces that have 32 bit float where I don't have to touch it. It's just like, well, nope, it's good, we're good. But the, because this is not 32 bit float, you have to be able to change the gain on the fly. But I don't want to be tethered to my computer going like the gain like this. While this isn't at the same league, this is the Zoom AMS 22, which is also a travel interface. But you, do you know what I like about this? Is that there's knobs that I can quickly change the gain, quickly change the headphone volume quickly like this. You can't do this on that. You need to go like, oh, hold on. Let me. I don't like that. that that's not good in my opinion, but this is a very like specialized sort of need on my end. And I think for the average streamer, it's fine. So that's all I'm going to say.